I'm Dave Baker. And I'm Spandrew Spice. Welcome to Deep Cuts, the podcast where we pick a topic and walk you through the ins, outs, and nitty gritty so you can appear like an interesting and idiosyncratic person at your next forced social function. Today's topic is Dr. Love, a.k.a. Malachi Love Robinson. Who is Malachi Love Robinson? Well, he's a young man who came into contact with the law more than once. What exactly were his crimes? Well, he impersonated a doctor. That's right. This man attempted to fraudulently pass himself off as a fully-fledged medical professional, giving people treatment, medical advice, and even stealing from patients. And the kicker? He was only 18 years old. Nurse, give me 50 cc's of... Holy shit, this is illegal. Malachi Alexander Love Robinson was born May 12, 1997. He's got a cherubic face and slightly inset eyes. He has the doughy physique of someone who wants to be loved and yet struggles with the human condition like all of us. Also, his name is a sentence. (laughs) It is. It has a subject and a predicate. Yes. And a verb. And a verb, yeah. His halting, somewhat stilted speech pattern belies a personality that's simultaneously fueled by ego and emotional fragility, which is probably why he's committing this bizarrely specific crime over and over and over again. Malachi Love Robinson first made it onto the local Florida news circuit when he was apprehended prowling the halls of a local medical facility in their maternity ward. Police questioned the young man and eventually took him into custody. He was listlessly wandering the halls, dressed as a doctor, white lab coat, stethoscope, and even embroidered lapels to boot. He was purporting himself to be an anesthesiologist. This whole thing is just like, I mean, I know that the the big thing we're getting to is like, this is the real life Doogie Hauser, but like, so far, this is just the setup for a like 90s Disney kid doing an adult job movie. Yes, completely. Yeah, it probably starred Jonathan Taylor Thomas. And uh, Sinbad was in it. Yeah, Sin Sinbad was like the was like the is like the nurse. Yeah, Sinbad's the kindly nurse that's like, uh, you know, he he's like the sarcastic but you know knowledgeable nurse that helps our young Jonathan Taylor Thomas commit wire fraud <laughs> in the climax of the movie or something because it's for a good cause. It's for a good cause. Yeah, it's played off as just like lovable hijinks such as any movie from the 90s with this premise where children are just committing crimes and fraud like that movie Blank Check. <laughs> right. Or even um, My Date with the President's Daughter. Isn't that like when you actually think about it, isn't it the whole plot of the movie that the dude has kidnapped the president's daughter? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he yeah, I don't know. I mean, because the whole thing is like she wants to date him, but she's not allowed to. But yeah, I mean, he would definitely in the minds of the Secret Service, he kidnapped her. (laughs) Amazing. I don't think that would wrap up with like a like, oh, you little scamp. Like, I think there would be some regardless of whether or not she was okay with it. I think there would be some legal repercussions. Yeah. During this initial run in with the law, Malachi Love Robinson denied any wrongdoing and the medical facility ultimately dropped the charges because he technically didn't do anything totally, absolutely wrong, more or less. Spandrew, why do you think that a 17-year-old would dress up like a doctor and go to a maternity ward and pretend to be an anesthesiologist? All right. So ju- just to give context to this, so full disclosure, um, kind of the, 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 the concept of this episode right tonight, the concept of this episode right now is that I did not read this script or read it, do any research on this before we did this episode, which is not usual. Usually somebody, either you or Andrew writes an episode and then the other person does their like puts their work into it you do the you do research you watch a movie or a documentary that is about the thing and then you kind of you read the script certainly and do additional research if needed and sometimes it's a lot of research and sometimes it's little uh but i have not read this script at all or, or i have not read this story at all so i'm i'm blind reacting to everything so that's important to say up front um and then the second thing to say is similar to kind of listening back to the episodes and similar to kind of what 
what was said during the John McAfee episode, where basically in the John McAfee episode, you guys were talking about the fact that usually in these episodes, you kind of have your mind wrapped around at least your interpretation of like the motivation behind these people's actions. But but in the case of John McAfee, it was like, I don't even fucking know. Like, I, I can't read this person. He's just chaos. Um, so I know this is a little, maybe this is a little premature, but just this far into the story, I have no idea. Like, I don't know why a teenager would do this. Like, I, I, I know why a modern teenager would do this and it would involve there being a camera somewhere and it's like a, and it's for a prank show, but without a camera with no, like I'm pranking thing involved, no like jackass era, like modern day motivations for why you would like do these weird little stunts. Um, I have no idea why, why a teenager would would go in there I, you know obviously it's not anything you know they're not trying to scam anybody necessarily because you know what does a teenage kid need with like i don't know uh, yeah i have no idea i guess my that's the, the the short answer is i get i get nothing from this this person is an enigma to me so far well i'm i'm curious to see how your perception of malachi love robinson shifts and changes over the course of this um, because when I first found out about this story, I was just kind of like, D- this kid just seems like eager beaver, I guess. Like, this is weird, but I guess he's not hurting anyone. Is he helping? Is he like shadowing a doctor? I don't know what. Give the kid an internship or something like help him learn. He wants to be a medical professional. Give him a fucking internship. He's going in there for free anyway. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But just, but just, but, but just wait. <laughs> it, it gets weird. That's my assumption. My, I mean, because what you're saying right now is like what you might assume is like, oh, maybe he's just best case faith, best faith argument, whatever. Yeah, maybe he's misunderstood. And he just like this was his way of trying to express that he wanted to be a doctor. And maybe instead of like penalizing him for it, somebody should have like embraced that and help. But, but my assumption is that there's a twist and that it doesn't pan out that way. Yes, it very much is that. Well, Things went from kind of weird and sketchy to full-on insane during January of 2016. Malachi Love Robinson opened a medical clinic in West Palm Beach, Florida. He offered holistic herbal care as well as other medical guidance. His clinic was called the New Birth, New Life Medical Center. Before we watch any video of him, this was the uh, Facebook event that he created to promote the New Birth, New Life Medical Center. So that's him. <laughs> that's that's Malachi Love Robinson in the middle. Uh, Spandrew, uh, how would you describe Malachi Love Robinson? I mean, he looks like a sweetheart. He looks like a child actor on a TV show. Like he looks like, like I would watch, like this doesn't look like an ad. So it's, it's him and two women and they've both got their hands on his shoulders and they're smiling, looking into the camera. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a, it's a, it's a, just a baby faced, just, just just delightful looking young man wearing like a cartoon doctor outfit like it's just it's just so like white and like perfect and then he's got like his mom and sister or aunt or whatever whoever these people are and they're just like they've got their arms on his shoulder it's a it's it's a delightful picture <laughs> and the the event is scheduled for saturday january 16 2016 at 3 30 p.m and uh you know that this stock photo that they have they're using to promote the new medical clinic uh, looks like the ad for, you know, a this fall on NBC style promotional image. And um, it's so weird to me how there are all these digital vestiges of because I tried to find the actual website that he built because he built a um, new birth, new life website that had a bunch of these kind of outlandish claims about his work history and and um the successes that he had as a doctor and uh most of that stuff has been taken down but this page is still here which is just such a strange artifact of the stuff that this person is going to do yeah i mean here's here's a couple things right off the bat first of all like so uh so malachi alexander love robinson that's that's a mouthful that that doesn't that doesn't speak to me super strongly other than just that it's a a long name but dr malachi love now that's a good name that's a good name that's a name 
Dr. Malachi Love is that's a strong name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a, a couple things that stick out to me. Number one, so this is this is this event for yeah, in NBNL Medical Center Grand Opening Celebration with Dr. Malachi Love. And it the host of this event is some person named Michelle Newsom. So it's not this isn't an event he created. This is like somebody else created this event. And then there's a little description here. Uh, come out and join the New Birth New Life Medical Center for our grand opening in Suite 303. We will be cel- celebrating the hard work of staff involved in making this business possible. Please come and share this memorable time with us as we celebrate the opening, uh, the opening a West Palm Beach uh, for his first the opening the opening West Palm Beach his first holistic medical center. It's like. <laughs> I'm assuming but his is Dr. Malachi Love. Yeah. That to me is like, oh, there was a couple other sentences at the end, but they got edited poorly. And it's like, we will celebrate the hard work of staff involved in making this business possible. So the, it's like saying that the business they've the staff has worked hard to make the business possible, but also it's the o- grand opening and it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Um so he- Basically, pretty pretty soon after this place opens, fifty eight people went. It says those so fifty eight people went, and nineteen people were interested. Fifty eight people is a lot of fucking people. Yeah, that's a lot of fucking people. Uh, so basically, this the the new birth new life medical center opens in, in early twenty sixteen. And then pretty quickly after that, he gets featured on local news. They they get wind of what he's doing. They start investigating. And uh, a local Florida news channel goes there to confront him about what he's doing. People are wondering, like, do you have any training to do this type of thing? Well, I actually, I only opened up the practice. We are hiring MDs and PAs to come and work within the practice, which are going to follow the scope that I requested. So the scope that I wanted was kind of an alternative form of medicine type thing, mm-hmm. um, just so people can get an alternative form. So uh, we were um, we were actually in contact with a few MDs within the area um, that uh, I wanted to make sure that if they were going to come in and practice, that they could practice with a with an alternative form of medicine. And so um, that's kind of the gist of it, um, you know. So, so in other words, you're, are you saying that you're just the proprietor? You're not the, exactly. You're exactly. not doing any type of examinations. Or no, 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 no. We have an MD who is. We have a couple MDs that we're talking to now. Who are your doctors? Like, who are you working with so far? Um, well, we we had we had a few. I don't feel comfortable dis- disclosing their names. Now, didn't that seem kind of fishy? I mean, what did his business partner think about? Oh him? man, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, what's your what's your vibe on Malachi Love, Doctor Malachi Love? Now that you've seen him talk in the hot seat, as it were. Yeah, after a couple of years of uh, listening to the show as a listener, um, that I've become very familiar with that particular that particular vibe, which happens in a lot of footage of people who get confronted about things where it's that same look in their eye, the same that same deer in the headlights look. And it's that like I'm talking like the essay has in a thousand word limit and I'm just trying to fill it. Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, his hitherto that the proprietor of this is uh myself and the uh mds that are henceforth being hired to operate under the scope of my uh vision of my of the scope of my practice and the more alternative forms of medical lies that i have therefore described it's like (laughs) It's like you can see that they're just like you can see that he's just like control, control, click, word count, control, click, word count. Yeah, he's just like he's like I'm just I'm just actively I'm I'm like manifesting like I'm 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 trying to manifest myself out of not going to jail right now in the moment, just in real time. Yeah, and I wasn't prepared for this, and I'm gonna keep my glasses on my. F- the top of my forehead the whole time yeah he's totally he's caught he's 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 gotten he's got nothing he's running on fumes um and uh yeah he's he sees the walls closing in on him not not quite as bad as uh old old uh uh what's his name fucking that 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 magician pedophile guy hydric 
Oh yeah, not not quite. He's not. He's not. He's, he hasn't gone full hydric yet. Yeah, there's there's you don't. He didn't. He hasn't quite reached the lengths of being you know outed for being a con artist pedophile. But like he's he's like half masked. He's half masked there. Well, his business partner finally admitted to me that originally he did have some doubts himself. I said, man, you look kind of young. And then he told me he was like, I'm 18, 19 years old. And that's when I was like, uh, so how'd you do this? And he explained to me homeschooling. Uh, he took some courses online. Well, Malachi Love Robinson tells me. That- oof, oof. So he told oof. me this and I was like, uh, this seems kind of fishy, but I'm going to follow through with it and do it. Like, what are you trying to say there? You're like, yeah, I don't know, man. I thought it was real sus as well, but I did sign that contract and went into business with him. <laughs> oof, oof. <laughs> So like homeschooling, right? Like, like like homeschooling? That's like totally. He's like a doctor, right? He's just like a homeschool doctor, right? It's fucking ridiculous. It's fucking ridiculous. So Malachi Love Robinson claimed to be supported by a staff of experienced medical professionals, and yet who were they? And how did they get enough money to open this medical clinic? How did he pass his licensing and medical and Medicare uh, evaluation checks? He's like he's like uh he's like. Uh, you know who are the who are the MDs that work here then? And he's like, uh, uh, Spalakai, <laughs> Splav, Splavinson, Splavinson. <laughs> Wouldn't it be so? Would it just be so stupid and like obvious if somebody did that? Like, how dumb would that be if if somebody tried to act like that was a different person? That'd be really fucking dumb. And anybody who believed that would be even dumber. Yeah, for sure, hundred percent. So the answer to the question of how the fuck did he do this? Florida. It's a hell of a place. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you know, I've uh, I, I've I, I heard this. I read this thing a long time ago or I heard about it or something like that. Um, but, you know, the, the, the thing we all think about how like Florida is insane and how there's all these crazy stories that come out of Florida and you hear all these like just batshit crazy news stories that happen in Florida, like woman stabs boyfriend with squirrel and just crazy shit like that. <laughs> and you're just like, yeah, it's Florida. And I I read a while back that apparently the reason for that is not necessarily that Florida is crazier, but that Florida has this thing called a sunshine law where they're required to release police reports on about everything, um, unlike other states. So they have to release every police report that they do publicly. And so the the news has access to the the minutia of weird little police reports uh, that are filed that no other state has access to. And then that's the reason why Florida is like thought of as this crazy place, because they're just they're making news stories out of police reports that other states just don't have access to. Um, and I think that's true. I mean, I, I looked into it and that's that's. The fact that that law exists in Florida is true, but you hear things like this and you're just like, nah, man, they they do it different in Florida. Speaking as somebody who has relatives who are in or have been in Florida. Yeah, shit's fucking weird there, bro. (laughs) Shit's fucking weird there. And that's coming from somebody who lived in Arizona, which is like the Florida of the West Coast. (laughs) Meth Florida. Meth Florida. Yeah, for real. So, you know, as 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 we've been talking about this he he basically sets up this business as he turns he got arrested originally for the attorney ward when he was 17 but they dropped the charges when he turned 18 he set up this clinic and this local local florida news channel uh wpbf 25 kind of like made him their like dog and pony show for a minute like they kind of were like a this is a juicy weirdo story b it has local flavor and c it has national appeal so they like really went for it for a minute um and here's a here's a <laughs> a clip that sums that up pretty well surprised to see us in his waiting room but agreed to an interview the first thing love robinson did was to slowly remove his stethoscope and lab the tra- hold on we'll play that we'll replay that but the tragic part of this image is just like this guy was about to have lunch yeah, he's he's standing there in full doctor regalia holding a to-go carton and he's just got this dumbstruck fate look on his face like what is happening right now he's about to sit down and just have a peaceful lunch like there's probably there's probably some like falafel in there maybe a bon me like he was gonna have uh he was gonna have a grand old time dude he was he was getting ready to get some tasty tasties and now his whole life is just gonna be exposed as a fucking fraud but also like think about but think about this too he went to lunch in his doctor's <laughs> which is like 
not what you do like that that's the tell that's the tell because that that was how that was how they thought that that's how they got suspicious about that dirty john guy because he was like a doctor he was supposed to be a doctor and he was dating their mom but then like they were so they were suspicious of them because they're like he just walks around in his scrubs like doctors don't wear their scrubs out of the hospital but he just like walks he puts them on in the morning and goes to work and then comes back wearing them (laughs) I love it. Surprised to see us in his waiting room, but agreed to an interview. The first thing Love Robinson did was to slowly remove. He is taking of off every piece yeah, of clothing like so stalling. slowly, stalling so slowly. <laughs> he's like what? He's like actively crafting the narrative in his head. A lot of sites online, all claiming that you're a doctor. Well, no, they don't claim medical doc- medical doctor as I am am aware of. Um, they, if you could stop recording. <laughs> oh, <no>! <laughs> <laughs> said we could start recording again and he asked us to come back for a second interview which we did this is the new birthing life medical center um brand new just you know we've just gotten everything done and ready and started state uh, records show the 18 year old licensed his business with the state his business partner says he also got his clinic approved to take medicaid and insurance payments and love robinson even has his own federal national provider number so, you know, I look at people who ask me, how can you be fooled? How can the state of Florida be fooled? You know, how can Mary <laughs> he's just trying to he's trying his best to not just appear like a fucking idiot. Has added charges of grand theft and forgery, claiming Love Robinson stole an 86 year old patient's checkbook. from her. <laughs> OK, stop the video. <laughs> Part of me kind of like I feel kind of bad. Like I watch this, it's it's hard to watch. It's hard to watch this kid like just like he knows that he's fucked and he's like trying his hardest to like get his way out of it. So part it's it's a little hard to watch, but I don't know how you can not laugh at him being arrested in the doctor outfit. <laughs> it's so good though. It's so good. Like because this video was was posted in on July 1st, 2016. So within six months of him opening this thing, people were like, mm, Doogie Hauser isn't really giving me any medicine. This is this is weird. I think I should call WPBF and maybe they should look into it. And his business partner is just like, you know, some people say, like, how did I fall for this? But the real question is, how did you fall for this? Huh? 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 Maybe I'm not such that maybe I'm not to blame after all. Maybe maybe I did nothing wrong and I'm not an idiot and I'm cool and you suck. Maybe that maybe that's the yeah, truth. You ever thought about that? You ever thought about that? No. Well, you should. No, I owe s- m- multiple people a lot of money now. I've been funding. I've been funding. I've been funding this fucking criminal as he's been like pretending to be a doctor and touching people. Hmm. Nobody will ever do business with me ever again because I was duped by a child grifter. Maybe it's you. Maybe, maybe the maybe Florida is the idiot. <laughs> you know, I almost didn't move to Florida because it looked like a fucking dingle dongle. But then I did. But then I got wrapped up in this whole Malachi Love Robinson thing. And now I'm going to move out of the dingle dongle because fuck this, Florida. I'm going to go live in Wyoming. Wyoming wouldn't get conned by a child. So very quickly after this segment, uh, he he gets arrested by Florida PD because basically it was it was like a joint investigation almost like the information started coming out. WPBF started investigating it and local law enforcement got involved very, very quickly. So Malachi Love Robinson got arrested and was accused of grand theft, practicing medicine without a license and forging documents. The which I just I I. I wonder if he forged documents dressed as a doctor. Oh, for sure. For sure. You can't spell document without doc. Yeah, I mean, document, doc, D-O-C-T. No, there's no R. I was going to say maybe you could spell doctor as well. There's no R. The local Florida WPBF report was picked up by national news, even making it onto the late night circuit with many comedians openly mocking the teen would be doctor. This is our this is our favorite uh, journalist, guy with no forehead. This self-proclaimed doctor 
is only 18 years old. I'm hurt because of the accusations and the allegations, but like I said, this is not the first time where I've been accused, and I will pursue this. It was only last year when Malachi, then just 17 years old, was detained at this local hospital in West Palm Beach. The police report says he was walking around the halls in a doctor's coat. I believe it said Department of Anesthesiology on it. Witnesses reporting he'd been roaming the hospital halls for a month. This story, Look at that guy. <laughs> everywhere. Like I'm some insane maniac. Last month, our affiliate WPBF caught up with him. I didn't snatch out a baby. I didn't do any of that. But police snapped this picture of the lab coat in his car. On one lapel, the title anesthesiologist. On the other, his name. The hospital did not press charges, claiming in a statement the individual never had contact with any hospital patients and did not gain access to any patient care areas. None of that deterred Love Robinson. Just this past October, a second incident. The Florida Department of Health issuing a cease and desist order claiming Love Robinson was leading the public to believe he was a licensed medical doctor while serving as a therapist in another Florida rehab facility. But for Love Robinson, is the third time the charm? The 18-year-old indeed now facing serious accusations from police. Seven of them, including grand theft and fraud for allegedly practicing medicine without a license. So are you a doctor of anything, anything at all? I do, curr I do currently hold um, a PhD um, in what I don't feel comfortable disclosing uh, because that is not the issue here. Um, the issue that I face now is accusations. After being released from jail on a $21,000 bail, Malachi sat down with ABC News. Do you even have a high school diploma? Yes, I do possess a high school diploma. The website for his medical practice still active online. His beaming bio referring to him as Dr. Love and calling himself, well, a well-rounded professional. He's facing a number of serious felonies here with the possibility of up to five years in prison on each of them. It was in early January that Malachi held a grand opening for this medical clinic. That's when police decided to bring in an undercover cop to the clinic posing as a patient. The undercover officer who was part of your arrest said that you treated her and that's what's in the charge sheet. Um, the undercover officer, when she came in, she merely had her weight taken, her blood pressure taken and her lungs listened to. Other than that, there was nothing out of the, the, the ordinary of something that your simple mother just would, would do. Police say it was when he started conducting her physical exam that they arrested him. In a press conference, Malachi claiming it was all a misunderstanding. I am deeply saddened um, and a little disrespected uh, by some of the things that have come forth. This isn't the first time a teenager has been busted for channeling his inner Mick Dreaming. Take Matthew what does that mean? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Listen, I have committed much fraud, malpractice, if that even is possible for if you're not actually a doctor. I think you actually can't even qualify as malpractice if you're not a, even a doctor. But I've committed like fake malpractice and I have uh, forged documents and I have scammed people and I am very disrespected by all of this information. I am offended at the fact that I have committed fraud and posed as a doctor and scammed dozens of people. It is absolutely disgusting. And I, I will be suing myself. I will be taking myself to court and I will be fully suing myself for, for committing this fraud because it, it is just, it is so disrespectful to me that I did this. I think there's something really interesting though about A, in the way that he speaks, like his speech pattern and B, the words that he chooses to use the speech pattern thing first it's it's interesting that he has this kind of like rolling hierarchy to everything he says and it gets kind of quicker and then he struggles to get out the lie i do hold a phd i'm just not quite comfortable telling you what that phd is in we have many medical professionals that we're working with here and it's just i don't really feel comfortable telling you who they are you can like feel him shoving the lie through his psyche in his speech pattern. Yeah, yeah, he's not like he's not like super charismatic, he's not charismatic at all and he's not like yeah, he's just he's he's not like capable of just like unblinkingly lying to your face in the same way that you you like look at, you know, interviews and stuff like that with with um 
uh, the Theranos woman. And like she she just can convincingly lie in your face and always appear like she knows what she's talking about. And this guy can't oh, because he's a child kind of. But like, yeah, he, he just can't do it. The other thing, too, is that he uses words like offended, disrespected, uncomfortable. They're all emotion based. Um, and specifically, he uses that I'm not comfortable f- phrase in multiple contexts in order to facilitate a or exploit a social norm that we all accept. Americans don't want to be perceived as someone who is encroaching or um, being aggressive towards anyone. And they don't feel, you know, there's a cultural norm that we don't want to make someone else feel uncomfortable. And it's so funny that you can just be a fucking lying piece of shit fraudster and say, well, I'm not really comfortable. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, you're not comfortable. Oh, that's cool. We just want you to be comfortable. It's cool. It's cool. Don't worry about it. It's cool. And just the idea that, like, he definitely has a PhD. But, like, 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 forget, like, put all this other fraud stuff aside. But I totally have a full PhD as a 18-year-old. 18-year-old. And, and yeah, looking looking up, there are, there are some very young people who have gotten a PhD. The youngest person to ever get a PhD is Carl Witt at age 13 but he was born he was born in the year 1800 and i think i think that probably there was it was probably maybe a little easier to get a phd back then yeah 1962 obviously there are like mega genius kids that prodigies that like go to college and earn degrees at like young ages but like i feel like there would be a track record there's gonna be there's gonna be some stuff later on where a couple journalists basically call him out and say like we found your degrees and you just like paid a guy in Colorado five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's pretty it's pretty good. Um, but I it's just it's just so impressive on one level that he was able to swindle this guy out of ten thousand dollars to help him start this medical clinic. Like it's it's impressive that you could just at eighteen. Like I mean, you and I ha- are kind of dogging on him for lying. Apparently, there's people that bought it, like a lot of people that bought it, which is so weird. Well, here's the thing. And this is what I was going to say. Like he got he got caught and arrested and all this stuff like that. But what if he hadn't? What if he just what if he just got away with it? Because he got that far. He got he got the funding. He got this business. He had like a legit uh, facility. He was treating patients and the largely through, you know, a, a, a news team getting wind of this and the cops, you know, being informed and sort of journalism, a journalistic takedown in this way, he got found out. Uh, but what if he hadn't? What if, what if that didn't happen? And what if he just like was practicing for years and like everything was fine? Like, I mean, holistic medicine is kind of like kind of bullshit. So it's not like he's like performing surgery on people. He could. The, the danger of it is like, you know, someone comes in with cancer and he's like, oh, well, all we have to do is like give you these essential oils and then you'll be fine or whatever, you know, misleading people people into not getting properly medically treated for diseases that are that can be terminal or deadly um but that's also just kind of what holistic medicine is anyway like it's not like an adult like licensed holistic uh person is like any less like misleading you away from like legit medicine so you know years go by he's been practicing nobody has been like hurt he hasn't like done anything bad uh i feel like he just gets to be a doctor like at that point you've you've earned it you're just a doctor now you you're you, just a you fucking did it. doctor congrats <laughs> yeah and yeah you're right like it is it is impressive that he got that far like I, the to me it's not a question of whether or not it's impressive it's just a question of like why like what are the what are the motivations behind this there's there's so many questions there's so many possibilities i have a lot of thoughts on it but just why like what why did you do this so i guess i the, the real question though is like how dangerous was old dirty malachi love robinson dr love As they say, you know, like, was he like performing surgery on people? No. Was he prescribing people like holistic remedies? Did he put anybody in harm's way? You know, I think that that for me is a big delineating factor of like whether this is funny, sad bullshit of like this guy sucks. He probably should be reprimanded in a significant way because he's dangerous or like is this guy like Jack Kevorkian? Like, (laughs) does he deserve to be on death row? I mean, I don't even, I personally don't even think that Kevorkian deserved to be on death row. Like if, 
assisted suicide is a completely separate conversation. But you know what I mean? Just like if somebody has is like has committed a crime to the degree that they are going to go into like a federal trial and be and it's going to be weighed whether or not they like caused death. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's watch this next clip here. Have you had training? I have. I have shadowed many doctors. You're saying your training comprises shadowing other doctors, real doctors. Your training comprises of a lot of things. Yeah, but you weren't in med school. So I am not I am not portraying as as an MD. I've okay, never said you... that I've gone to school to be a MD. How does an 18-year-old with no real medical training or much formal schooling at all open a medical office? Ask his business partner, Perseus Wells. He claims to have invested $10,000 in the clinic. I feel like I shouldn't judge until I know. When the gavel hits and the jury decides that he was lying and the evidence mounts up the, to the fact that he is This is lying, what he's saying now? That's when I'm going to say to myself, yep, he's a liar. If you've got you might think, how did I get totally conned by an 18 year old wearing a, a, a Walmart costume doctor outfit? But the real question is, why did Florida get conned and why did you believe it? And also, maybe he's not even lying and maybe I was the smartest person all along because I backed a genius. Have you ever considered that maybe he's a genius? Until that gavel falls, I'm just going to say that I am a fucking genius. And we're going to go to the moon with this shit, baby. And you're a dummy. I also just love the way that Malachi Love Robinson says, I shadowed many doctors. I shadowed many doctors. Well, he does that. He does that thing from like movies where he like mumbles the truth. Where he's like, oh, yeah, I, uh, it was, uh, I shadowed my doctor. And he's like, what? I, uh, shadowed my doctor. <laughs> What'd you say? I shadowed many doctors. What? What? I shadowed many doctors. Like, he, he did that, does that literal thing. <laughs> oh, God. I love it so much. I shadowed many doctors. He's like physically, he's like physically externalizing the struggle with the lie. Like you can just, it's just, it's just happening. He's like, it's like, it's like rendered in his body, the struggle with the lie. He's like his, the way he talks is like the ebb and flow in the roller coaster ride of like trying to get these lies out. You can just like, you can just like see it happen physically. Yeah. Yeah. Police say that Malachi Love Robinson treated an elderly woman for severe stomach pain. He charged her $3,494. He also has been accused of taking a checkbook out of another woman's purse and using the checks for his own benefit. I can tell you this. Accusations are merely accusations. And services, you'd have to define that. Um, whether she paid for me to just show up, that's up to her. You're not denying the fact that she paid you $3,500 or so, correct? No, I am denying that. Are you a fraud? I don't appreciate your tone. I don't appreciate the way you're portraying this interview to actually be. And then a moment we didn't expect. I don't know where you're seeing this information from, but it is inaccurate. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to cut this in this interview short. But he has said this may not cut his medical career short, saying he hopes to open another clinic in the future. That is, of course, once he's done dealing with his legal woes. For Nightline, I'm Matt Gutman in Los Angeles. Listen, maybe I did charge her $3,900 for a visit, but what's this? I mean, what's to say what the visit was? Maybe she just paid me to show up. Maybe she just paid me to be in the room. Maybe I just wanted to hang out and she just wanted to hang out. And so I just came over and it was like $3,494 with no strings attached. Who knows? Do you need a license to, to light up someone's day with your warmth? I don't think so. Look at these pearly whites. Is this smile not worth $3,494 to you? Everybody's heard about the charming old ladies who they're widows and they have all this money from their dead husband's life insurance and they'll they'll pay you anything just to spend a little time with them. What's to say that's not what happened? What's to say that I run a business where I just go and I just I just spend some time. I mean, really, I'm a hero when you really think about it. I'm spending time with these old ladies. They're paying me money. They're consenting to it. Maybe that woman has intense stomach pains, doesn't have anything to do with me i'm just there i'm just there to to give her i mean I'm, I'm there to just give her the light that she needs and if that fix listen, listen if that fixes her stomach pains that's not my fault <laughs> amazing it's amazing i love it um so i guess you know kind of what did what did he actually do for the patients that he 
saw? Like what, what was he actually doing for people? Well, I've done internships and trainings in the psychiatric field. Um, and one of them specifically was in psychology. And um, I do have training in that field. Um, it's been a field that I've been as, as, associated with mo multiple times because some people find it so hard to believe that someone so young could do this. And um, a lot of people refer to me as Dookie Hauser, and I still have yet to see this guy. Um, but um, I have, I do have people <laughs> in those fields. Now, what I will say is anything that I do is always overlooked and looked at by a MD level or a DO level, a professional. I don't treat these diseases. I don't treat them on, on my own. I do not. What I do is I do have psychologists that come in as 1099 contractors or psychiatrists. They treat these patients along with whatever input I may have in the holistic field, in the naturopathic realm, as of what we can do for them. A lot of things we treat with a lot of psych or man manic depression or bipolar or skits can be therapies, music therapies, acupuncture, massage therapy. A lot of these things are stress relieving. They're, they can sometimes even be neural mind altering um, the feelings of these certain things going on. What, 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 what? <laughs> so he basically just said like, I make people listen to music and get massages. <laughs> I like how in the, in the middle of this like this interview where he's just being called out as a fraud and a criminal, he just like takes a moment to like kind of cheekily brag about himself. He's just like, these accusations are ridiculous. I will not tolerate these things. You are calling me a fraud and a liar. Some people, you know, they, they call me Doogie Hauser. I've yet to meet this guy, but <laughs> you know, that's what they say. You know, I don't know. It's not, not my words. Somebody else's words. I, that's what people say. Uh, but anyway, uh, are those cops? Are those police officers over there? Are they waiting for me? <laughs> in September of 2016, in Stratford County, Virginia, Malachi Love Robinson was arrested after being accused of fraud for trying to buy a Jaguar car worth $35,000 with the help of an elderly co-signer without her knowledge. The, the elderly woman was his godmother, and he used her name and social security number on the loan without her understanding. Listen, what if I just go to someone's house, some some poor old lady, lonely, doesn't have anybody, nobody, her husband's dead, her grandchildren have abandoned her, nobody is in this woman's life. If I take it upon myself to have the heart to visit this woman, and in return, she happens to want to buy me a $35,000 Jaguar, but she doesn't want to get up out of bed and go to the store, so she gives me her social security number, you don't don't have to be a doctor for that to happen, is all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. In May of 2017, Love Robinson was sentenced for his fraud and larceny charges committed in Virginia and was sentenced by a Stafford County judge to five years in prison. For his charges in Florida, Love Robinson agreed to a plea deal for a reduced prison sentence where he would plead guilty to grand theft, practicing medicine without a license, and fraud charges in 2018. For his crimes of larceny in Virginia, Love Robinson served one year of his sentence. For his crimes of impersonating a doctor, practicing medicine without a license, and theft in West Palm Beach, Florida, Love Robinson was sentenced to serve 3.5 years of his sentence in a maximum security prison outside of Fort Myer. While imprisoned in Florida, Love Robinson gave an interview to Inside Edition in 2018, in which he said he was a young kid that got overly ambitious and just said to hell with the rules and regulations. He admitted that he still wanted to be a physician someday. In September of 2019, Love Robinson was released from prison in Florida after serving 20 months of his 3.5 year sentence. And then in January of 2020. All right, guys. <laughs> all right, guys. I have a cure for everything. Come down to my my facility and I will I will put on some music and the covid will be gone. The covid will be gone. I love it. I love it so much. I love I love his bizarre speech pattern. I love his weird, halting, stilted, and then we're gonna just go into the sentence before we go into the next thing. Like I I love it. Yeah, it it's so yeah. I mean, I just I just it's like to me, it's just like what like the why and like that last quote kind of almost got that kind of got as close to being something that I could understand because it was it's kind of what I've been thinking this whole time throughout the story. I'm just thinking like you hear so many stories like this. 
that aren't criminal where a young kid usually like a super poor kid like does some crazy shit and they're really ambitious and they like kind of fake it till they make it into something or they kind of like lie about something but in a harmless way to like get themselves into a door and they just like start some kind of business or they get into some kind of industry like and they kind of like cut ahead in line you know they don't go through the proper channels they don't go to school they just kind of like get in there and you have this young kid that does this really ambitious thing and you're just like oh my god like that's 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 kind of that's kind of crazy and it's also really inspiring that this this kid was just so ambitious ambitious and they kind of just hustled their way into this thing um and it's like it reminds me of that like like that's the thing i've been thinking the whole time is like this feels like one of those stories that you kind of read about where somebody does something like this except for it he 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 like took it too far or like he just he just he chose the wrong thing to do this in like you can fake your way into a lot of things but you cannot fake your way into like performing medical procedures on people yeah it's kind of you know you hear these glamorized stories of like steven spielberg lied his way under the lot and conned this person and that person into reading a script or green lighting an idea or whatever or you know Jerry Weintraub like lied his way into getting his first job as a producer by doing this that and the other and you know uh, there's all these kind of Hollywood glitz and glamour stories about people who bend the rules and we as a culture celebrate that because we're like yeah the system is rigged the system fucks everybody burn the system down baby but in this weird like pro-capitalist way of burning the system down where we're like we love that you broke the rules in order to play by the rules ostensibly and make a bunch of money where malachi rub Rub robinson (laughs) malachi love robinson uh, is like breaking these rules and uh, just stealing from people just lying bought a jaguar car stealing money from old ladies like it's just it's just really sad that's the part where it turns and it's like oh no this is full on like you are a serial thief um but but yeah i'm thinking like that too but i'm also thinking of like these kind of stories you know i've i've heard multiple of them and i'm sure you have as well but i'm I, just one that pops into my mind um there's a story that i heard in a podcast um that was a, a, a podcast about like kind of like hacking and and like dark net data security stuff and there was a story about this kid who was like around malachi's age and he was a he was a poor kid from like a really like uh you know l- low income and like kind of broken home type situation and you know had a lot of home issues and not a lot of stability and he got into like wanting to be a hacker and uh messing around with trying to like hack into systems and do things just as like stunts and stuff like that and basically what happened was he hacked into his school's computer system and he like changed the school website home page to say something i forget what he changed it to say but he just changed it to say something like like principal fart sniffer is an idiot or whatever um and like he got caught and it was like oh shit like you this thing you did was like a big deal because like you know i know you were just messing around but that was like illegal and you could go to jail for this and so like he gets the the fbi comes to talk to him and they're questioning him about this stuff and it all seems like this kid is gonna get arrested like this and like go to prison or jail because you know the, the data security is like serious business um even if it's just as simple as like hacking into the school website and changing the words and then the story basically wraps up with like the the FBI cybersecurity um officers recognize that this kid is like he 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 he's not like malicious he's not somebody who was trying to cause any harm he's just like a kid from this poor family who you know is gone through some bad stuff in his life and he's just trying to like figure figure things out and he has this interest in this thing and like instead of like punishing this kid for this thing how about we try to like turn it around and like give this kid a chance and utilize this thing and then they all kind of came to this joint agreement where the school decided not to press charges and they they you know they basically ended up kind of realizing that you know they shouldn't punish this kid to the fullest extent of the law and what ended up happening was this this kid basically on the strength of this he went on to like get a job like it working for the government as like a data security person and there are multiple stories like this on the same podcast where like a 
young kid will do some crazy shit and get into huge trouble and then like people will kind of realize like oh like maybe instead of just like arresting this kid instead we'll like give him an outlet for doing this and we'll actually use it for good and have him like work for the government or work for I say good in quotes because you know, that's not necessarily good but but like to them uh, and this is this story reminds me of that except for like that's like hacking into like computer systems which is like a valuable tool if you recognize it and it's like oh like let's get this kid like working for us and like hacking for our purposes and instead of like doing illegal shit he can funnel all of this into a, a career and this is like oh this kid is like m- like fooling like naive old people into trusting him with their health and like doing like potentially fucked up medical procedures on them and this is just not okay like you're going you're going to jail man like there's no like let's give this kid a chance it's like no like you're you are going to jail yeah uh it also has the distinction from those stories of being like this kid isn't just somebody with too much time on his hands like he's actually malevolent like it, it kind of seems like he might be that f- a little bit. Yeah, that's why I said that the car thing turns it. The car things turns it because it's like before that, it's almost as if like he really was like he just wants to be a doctor. And he just like was he was a kid and he thought this was the way that he could do it. And he got, you know, he got fixated on it and he just went way too far with it. And then the car thing turns it to you're like, oh, no, he's like legitimately like a path- pathological liar and like con artist. And the fact that he's stealing like thirty five hundred dollars from old women and stealing their checkbooks and like, you know, it, it's just yeah, it's very sad and very kind of like, oh, it's it, this is great. This is great. Look at this fucking idiot. This is so funny. Oh, there's actual people really incurring harm. Oh, less fun. It's a bummer. It, 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 it This kind of feels like the that movie Catch Me If You Can. If Catch Me If You Can's protagonist was malicious, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like the 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 romantic idea of that character in the movie to where like he's doing all these things. And then but then there's there's almost this kind of like there's almost this like love story between Leonardo DiCaprio and and uh, uh, Tom Hanks of just like, you know, I like you are you feel compelled to do these things because it's like almost an art form to you. And I like in a weird way, like kind of admire it. And then also you give me kind of purpose to like try to catch you like that's my that you've given me purpose. And so there's almost this like mutual like respect. And then whenever he gets caught, he's like, you got me like it's like it's like this romantic ending of like, oh, well, the jig is up like you got me when you get me, you get me like that's I'm not going to fight it. Whereas in this case, it's like all of that, except for when you catch him, he's like, uh, I am disrespected by the forthwith uh, accusations that I am therefore not in the realm of having my Ph.D. that has been issued to me by the powers hence of that uh i paid a guy five dollars to give me a fake diploma (laughs) yeah he he, it's it's uh it's catch me if you can if it was directed by paul thomas anderson and starring like i don't even know i don't even know who you would cast as malachi love robinson like because you want somebody that's kind of like inherently sad you know like that's all of this stuff feels like it flows from an inner absence you know yeah like the, the malachi love robinson is he's like he's like a like a jesse eisenberg but with like without like that like hard edge like the, it's 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 been the, the the jesse eisenberg has been like sanded down a little bit that that's that character of like he's got that like cockiness and that like acerbic sort of like uh lack of accountability for any of his actions but he's just like he doesn't have like the sh- the sharp tongued like control of the situation he really is just like white knuckling it through every moment yeah 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 that's that's a really good point though is like malachi Robla oh my god <laughs> Rob <Robinson. laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. malachi love robinson thinks that he's jesse eisenberg in you know social network or whatever where he's like Oh, that's not that's a bad example because that's a real person. But you know what I mean? Like Jesse Eisenberg in the, on the promotional tour for any of those movies where he's like condescending to people and really kind of like, mm-hmm. like that's who he thinks he is. But in reality, he's just kind of like a lonely uh, couch potato. Any uh, any any final thoughts about our guy Malachi Love Robinson? Love Robinson. Spandrew. Any final thoughts? 
thoughts. Yeah, I, I feel like I kind of I that stuff I was kind of saying before really was kind of like my big overarching thought on it is like it it just listening to the story is kind of hard to pin down. Like, what is this? What is this kid's um, motivations? It doesn't it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like a story of somebody who's just like so passionate about something that he just like manifested into reality. It doesn't feel like somebody who has some kind of like mental illness that is like doing this out of some kind of bizarre obsession. So what is it? And I get I, and yeah, I guess I guess the thing is, it's like I guess he was just like a, a, a teenage con artist. Yeah, it to me it feels like he realized the power structures around the medical profession are so strong that he could exploit them for personal gain, you know. It's the thing of like, you know, uh in the town when Ben Affleck wears police uniforms and nobody questions what he's doing when he's robbing banks and shit because he's wearing a police uniform and people are conditioned to trust those uniforms. Um and that that's what it feels like to me is like at some point, he had a realization that he was infantilized or disempowered in his natural setting, and he could counteract that by having a white lab coat and a stethoscope on, and he liked that feeling. Yeah, the most extreme version of social engineering, which which is why which is why it reminds me of those hacking stories, because a lot of those involve like social engineering stuff. Like a lot of those stories involve like, yeah, I just like walked into a store and pretended like I was uh, uh the computer technician and they just gave me the password to the computer and just let me in. Like a lot of it is like not real hacking and like that you're like typing codes or whatever. It's literally just like acting like you're something you're not and then people will just trust you and just like having the confidence of like making them believe that you are a computer technician or you are like a, a, a regional manager of some bank chain or something like that. And that's kind of what he's that's kind of that's exactly what he's doing he's it's just like the social engineering of like asserting that he is a doctor and then like kind of the thing that catches you off guard and makes you believe it is because he's young because it's like you already have this high concept that he's like this weirdly young doctor he's like doogie hauser in real life like it would be it would be one level even deeper into like craziness if he was also lying so you it's like you don't it's like it lulls you into this weird false sense of security because you're just like i guess he really is a doctor because like i don't like of course like i feel like no there's no way that he would just also be lying about this like this is already a crazy thing there's no way that it's also not true so it's like this weird reverse psychology and he and he was able to get away with that for long enough but he also just kind of sucked at like lying so it didn't work for very long yeah i mean that's the real the real terrifying thing in this is like what if he had been good at lying and we've and we've seen stuff like that all a lot. We've I mean I can't I, none of the I, none of them come to mind right now. But there are so many stories of like this person was just doing this for decades until they were found out that like they were not actually a whatever they were lying about what they were or whatever. And that does happen. That genuinely does happen. So like this almost serves as like a this story is one of those things that just serves as like a marker point for like this story about how this guy got caught doing this. Imagine that there's thirty other things happening in the world. World right now where the person didn't get caught terrifying and on that note i'm dave baker and i'm spandrew spice this has been deep cuts if you'd like to find me on the internet you can do so at heydavebaker.com or at xdavebakerx where you can find my books uh everyone's tulip night hunters star trek voyager sevens reckoning or fuck off squad spandrew where can people find you on the internet you can find me at your local hospital dressed full to the nines in my shiniest whitest newest doctor outfit that gives no indication that it's ever been actually practically used in any kind of realistic scenario and is merely just a thing that i keep hanging in my closet and i put on whenever i need people to think that i am important and you can't find me on social media because i don't use social media but if you want to give a little a little uh give a little tribute to the, our dear sweet fallen papa pricey you can check out his website dapricerights.com Pri- da where you can get his book the final book ever produced uh deadbolt ai private eye um yeah he never quite did put that second issue out did he yeah it's the the great uncompleted uncompleted works well maybe we'll maybe we'll find them find those scripts in a in a drawer one day yeah we we we, we open up a drawer and find the the lost the lost uh manuscript for the rest of deadbolt we're just like oh man like that dude he was like he got really into some eugenic stuff there at the end oh no no the problematic posthumous legacy of papa pricey <laughs> Oh no. Um and uh you can also get some deep cuts merch 
from the show by going to deepcutspod.com and clicking on the shop or you can go to bitly.com slash deepcutsmerch. You can follow Deep Cuts on social media. On Facebook, Deep Cuts Podcast, you can join the Facebook group, Deep Cuts Podcast Facebook group, where we uh, talk about the show and other things and make memes and so on and so forth. Um, you can follow us on Instagram at Deep Cuts Pod. Uh, you can follow us on TikTok at Mystery Treehouse. Uh, you can join our Discord, bitly.com slash Deep Cuts Discord, another community where we talk about the show and other unrelated things um yeah that's it. Deep Cuts is a production by Boy Genius Media. If you'd like to find this show and others like it, please visit boygeniusmedia.com or deepcutspod.com. If you want to join in on post-episode discussions, please join the Deep Cuts Podcast Facebook group. Finally, subscribe to our YouTube channel for additional video content.